You're watching the Rebel Scum Podcast. You are always scum. Rebel Scum. From odds making to list rankings, we've got you covered. And don't forget to join us on Patreon for early access and exclusive content. Here are your hosts, Brock and James. James, in another proof that uh, our phones and our devices are listening to each other, I just found out that you can buy Boss cans at Bed Bath & Beyond yeah. for $39.99. The internet is listening, but what a wonderful time to be alive where you can have Boss cans by simply going to a home outfitter's sort of place. My question for you is how quickly did you get on there and, and order that? That's the thing. There was a surprising a lot, a surprising amount of interesting home decor. I may go there right after this. This is the Rebel Scum Podcast. I'm James. This is Brock. Boom. We are one. one like Ray force, and baby. Kylo. Yeah. <laughs> we are having a force baby, and his name is Daryl Lewis. Wait, reach out and touch my hand. Be with me. Oh, yeah. Sorry. I'm. Other, other hand. Other hand. There we go. <laughs> what are you doing? <laughs> Don't touch each other. <laughs> it's yeah. Imagine Ray and Kylo were like uh, Jean Claude Van Damme and Time Cop, where like if you touch your future self, you like both explode. <laughs> <laughs> uh, that's our first Time Cop reference. I'm proud. I'm proud. It's <laughs> taken us over three years to get Time Cop referenced on this show. My dog's barking. But it's time to be alive. Huh? Oh, you. It's it. Uh, it. Uh, Haley doesn't like time cop. He prefers sudden death of the Jean Claude Van Damme oeuvre. <laughs> <laughs> she's a big shot. She's, she's got to go poop. Uh, it's bright and early in the morning. Obviously, nobody's watching this live uh, because no. it's not live. Uh, but there might be a live chat. So if you're on live chat, keep talking because it's a lot of fun to have the live chats going. We are a week, just over a week removed from. The rise of Skywalker. Yes, Skywalker has risen. Uh, the fandom's hatred of Star Wars has peaked out once again at the world. Apparently, it's a box office flop, but then it's also a huge box office success. Nobody can make up their mind uh, nope. what it is. It's something. Uh, it is Star Wars is what it is, and this is something that we've grown accustomed to. Uh, you know, we had an anomaly called The Force Awakens where people seemed to actually enjoy that movie. <laughs> and then a year later, people hated that movie because it's Star Wars. And if you don't hate Star Wars, what's the point? Oh, I don't know, though. Force Awakens, don't forget, Ray is a Mary Sue because she's she just is. good at everything. And that was my problem with that movie from the get-go was, I mean... How did she like? Who taught her how to put her hair in those buns? <laughs> is my biggest issue with that movie because Uncar Plot definitely could not do that. Definitely could not have done that because she doesn't undo her hair. You see her as a young girl, and she has the exact same hairstyle. So imagine she they did that where they up. undid her hair and it's like just matted, <laughs> it just sand and like a hermit crab crawls out you're like she did, she did change in the last jedi though but i think she has actually i think the reason why she goes back to the hairstyle in the last jedi is for the leia scenes like or in the rise of skywalkers for the leia scenes obviously they had to <laughs> they had to connect that you finally saw the movie for a second time yes what a wonderful film uh, i love it even more that's right I love to hate this movie. No, um, it was great. I brought my parents and my aunt, and they they loved it. And my aunt was very uh, uh, hesitant that this was going to be an enjoyable movie because she doesn't really follow Star Wars. I've ta- she's seen all of them, but like she can't remember. She doesn't go and watch them and think about them after we go see them. But she was like, "That was really really good." My mother said she almost shed a tear uh, oh, when Mister Ben Solo passed oh. away. Oh, yeah. That's and I shed a tear when Babu Frick returned. <laughs> the spoilers, spoilers for our top five today. I love Babu Frick. <laughs> how could you? Has anyone said that they don't love Babu Frick? Nobody. Not enough people are talking about Babu Frick. Like it's I like how it's not on a shirt yet. Make James. We gotta make a shirt. And it'll be all, be all over it. Actually, I will go on T 
public right now and be. look up Babu Frick and see what comes up. Uh, anybody um, uh, watching, listening right now, we do have on New Year's Day at 12 o'clock Eastern. You can check us out. We're going to have our ranking Star Wars show. The definitive ranking of the, of the Star Wars saga. All 11 live action films, theatrical live action films, sorry Ewok movies, uh, will be ranked uh, from uh, the definitive best to the definitive worst. Um, and it's going to be uh, a lot of fun. And, and and look, it's not... So I say I say this, and, and ranking Star Wars is, is ridiculous, obviously. Like, how do you do it? What's the point? But what we're doing is we're taking... You know us here at Rebel Scum, and and all and our Patreon supporters, and and a bunch of podcasting YouTube friends that we have made over the the last three years, and we're going to take all of those lists and we're going to combine them into one giant list. So it won't be, uh, you know, my personal top ten. It won't be yours. It's just going to be a culmination of like twenty to thirty lists. And uh, it's right now I've been adding them together, and and we're in for a treat. And I can guarantee you Rob McDonald will be teed off. Ticked <laughs> right off with the list. Uh, but it's 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 really uh it's been fun looking at these lists, Brock. Like it's been it's yeah. been incredible. It's fun to watch it evolve over the last like this is our fourth time doing it and uh it's uh in the words of the Mandalorian, you can't be mad because in the words of the Mandalorian, it is the way. This is the way. <laughs> Update on Babu Frick shirts. Yes. There are at least twelve different kinds. Uh, mostly the the it's either Babu Frick's droid repair, droid smith, or Babu Frick is one of my oldest friends. <laughs> and then there's one where it's his face and it says, "Hey, hey." <laughs> my, I, I love the internet. T Public, go check it out. Yeah. Great website. We got shirts on it. Buy them. I don't know. Uh, shameless plug. I don't. Know. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, but uh, yeah, I'm very excited for writing Star Wars this year. Uh, I thought I would uh, hate it, but here we are, four episodes, four, three years later, yeah. and I'm like, it's that time of year again. It's just a fun thing to do because it's not our like Andrew's like oh, and I'm like don't put too much stock into your personal list because it's there's twenty of us, so. I, like I, I said, like, cause you know, I've seen, uh, there's a few people that are like, well, I really, you know, I'm like, just put the movies you would watch today down because we all like all 11 of them, but don't yeah. worry. And don't be offended when this movie is last attack of the clones. Don't worry about it because that was, I'll say this mm -hmm. every year. Attack of the clones is dead last every year. I think I switched it up on my list this year. You did, but I'll no. I think you actually but, you've consistently had it the way you had it. Those bottom two, I think. Yeah. Actually, you know what? True story. I, think I, did. I have last year's rankings right here. <laughs> I have to find them. Give me a second. I have because it's in the same book. Look. I had this year's. We look into the Jedi tomes. <laughs> yeah, the, the sacred texts. Um. Oh, I just saw them. They are in this book, which is the book that I'm using this year as well. Yeah. It's just fun to like see how we've all changed because I'll say like the last Jedi is one that has flip flopped on a lot of the lists, uh, and it's one I will say a lot of people have it first and a lot of people have it dead last. Like it's that kind. It's you know the most divisive divisive movie of all time, right? Star Wars in terms regards to Star Wars. <laughs> so uh, it this these rankings are not showing it. Uh, Anyway, I'm not going to bother finding those because I can't, and it's going to take way too long, and uh, nobody cares. <laughs> but I'm pretty sure your bottom two are the exact same last year as this yeah. year. Yeah. I'm, I'm fairly certain on that. Uh, what do you think the number one movie is going to be this year? I think uh, it's going to be exciting. Um, the definite answer is either Empire Return of the Jedi. Yeah. <laughs> but I think Rise is really going to shake things up. Uh the, but you know, I think that says a lot about where this franchise is going. Where like the original, original winners like Empire and Jedi, you're like, it's it's just a it's just a question of which one do you like the least. Like, but it's, they're always going to be top two. I can never see it falling past three or four. Like yeah. it's, 
Um, maybe one day <laughs> when our children are ranking Star Wars <laughs> in 30 years and we're dead from a car from a car accident trying to get to a Star Wars film. <laughs> <laughs> Spoilers, that's how we die, James. That's actually ringing too true to, uh, to, to what's happening here. <laughs> you look at me and you're like, I wonder how thick that ice wall is. And I'm like, that's a brick wall, you dummy. And then smash. <laughs> oh my God, this took a dark turn. <laughs> and then we're buried side by side and there's an XLR cable going into our coffins because we have microphones. And our tombstone reads, they were always scum. <laughs> Rebels. <laughs> uh, you know what? It's it is true. Those two will probably be number one for a very long time. However, you, I, every time I do the list, I always have a new hope, fairly low, like mid to low. Yeah, and I'm like this. It's actually probably the best Star Wars movie yeah. of them all. Like, <laughs> it's, it's it's the one where you like you can watch it. It has a beginning, a middle, and an end. You don't need any more after that. You don't need anything before it. You get all the information right there. It's a fun fun film. Empire is probably the, the most well made of them all. Mm. But you can't have Empire without without a New Hope. A New Hope is just probably the most perfect of all the Star Wars movies. Yet it's like five or six on my like. It's just like it's like. It's a new hope. It's it's quality. <laughs> no one argues over that movie. Not one person argues over a new hope. No. It's on the AFI top one hundred for a reason. <laughs> yeah, it should be. I mean it changed cinema. Yeah. Yeah. You can't you can't have it with but it's uh it's so funny how it works. Yeah. And it's like and it started the predis it's the where we set like our our um level of what is a good star wars film to the point that like i think and that's the phenomenon of empire and return where it's just like the sequels or i don't want to say better but like you were like ex more excited like wow 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 so now this is why we're living in this world where people can't be happy with star wars because they're like well, it has to be better than this it has to be better than that. i'm like it could just be a movie but it could just move and I, I also think part of the reason nobody's ever happy is because we've all been introduced to Star Wars via some different mm -hmm. media, right? Like medium, like you know, uh, for me it was probably the toys. For you, mm -hmm. it was toys or movies. People, it's books, yep. video games, yep. animated series, stuff like that. So everybody has a different idea of what Star Wars is, and it's 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 not really it's consistent but not consistent. And so you know, people go in with these preconceived notions of what their Star Wars is, and then they get yep. you know a, a movie version of what. Somebody and this goes for George Lucas as well. There's a movie version of of somebody else's idea of Star Wars, and they just can't accept it. You know, it's hard to accept. Um, yeah, accept it because you know everybody praises praises George Lucas now, but I <laughs> yeah. I remember 20 years ago there was not much praising going on. There was a lot of I mean, who was it? Someone I think at CNN was banned from the Attack of the Clones premiere. Because they they reported that the Phantom Menace was a disappointment. <laughs> this is CNN. Like, yeah, you're not welcome here anymore. I can't remember who it was, but that's true. Just Google it. <laughs> Google it. Everyone hates. Google it. Everyone hates Star Wars. I said that off the top, and I maintain that. Yeah, but look at us. You got your Star Wars shirt on for Fan Expo. I got my new. I hate yours. Uniqlo, Jar Jar Binks, Chinese. What size is that? XL, bro. You need a medium. Yeah, but I kind of want to just steal yours. Screw <laughs> you, man. You're the one that lost weight. <laughs> well, I can still wear an XL. I, this is an XL. <laughs> it's like, is it an XL? Oh yeah, that does kind of look good on you. It's pretty big. I just know you. If it if it's too big for you, it looks like you're swimming in it. It's true. You know, Aaron gets mad because I have uh, most of my clothes are too big for me now. But I don't want to shop because I have clothes. So, yeah. so I actually, I've, I've pinned some shirts back. <laughs> but what a time to be alive, James. We have the finale of Rise, um, finale of, Rise of Skywalker, the end of the Sky Skywalker saga. And we in, in the same week, pretty much, we have the finale for the se season of Mandalorian. I don't know if we were going to talk about this at all. 
If you want a full review, check out Mandalorian Scum and those dirtbags. I mean, scumbags. <laughs> no, it's mostly dirtbags. Um, but, like, what a fantastic time to be alive. That was a great show, great ending. Love it so much. Uh, I I just wish our, our, our British friends could watch it, you know, or the European friends. And mm -hmm. they can't see it unless they watch it illegally. Do it. Oh, they are. She's That's like, how like do you us. not? The, yeah. You know what? I, the one thing, aside from you know everyone being bitter over every everything in Star Wars, the one thing that that annoys me the most is when Avengers um, Endgame came out. I saw it. Uh, I think I didn't see it the first weekend. I think I saw it the second weekend. I didn't see one spoiler online, and I was on. I was active on. On social media i didn't see one spoiler online no one ruined anything for me mm. within seconds of leaving the theater for the rise of skywalker ray's lineage was there <laughs> uh the death of the, the, before it even went up there was people talking about ben solo being dead i found out after like and then and then the mandalorian stuff 6 30 eastern it, it, spoilers on social media like oh yeah chill everyone needs to chill on the spoilers for star wars like not everybody can watch it at the same time i watched this episode of the mandalorian i think around 10 or 11 in the morning i didn't go online i didn't really I, I had no reason to go online it was you know the friday after christmas i was good with uh not going online had some errands to run caught home watched it but then i went on and i'm like wow there are stills yeah. from the episode being shared it's just uh I don't know. We I think we need to collectively all gather around a bonfire and discuss uh, spoilers. Whether you like it or not, you don't need to spoil something for something. No, no, yeah. At least wait a week. I mean, yeah. with a show, I think with a movie you should wait longer, but with the TV show, especially because Disney Plus, not everyone has it. Like I just gave it to my parents. They're using my my uh, what you call it. Well, I um, but like. It's it's getting there, and it's stuff like the Mandalorian that will bring people in, because uh, you're like I, I, I you just tell people it's like you can't miss this. It's great, um, but yeah, I think we need to relax. I was having a conversation about Baby Yoda yesterday, and we we're talking about how like the toys and collectibles like they probably won't come out till next year, and like it, or well, <laughs> next year it's in a week, yeah. <laughs> but you know what I mean. Like it's Wednesday. like. It, and, and uh, people I was talking to, like, it's like, I think that's a misstep because, like, sell it now for Christmas. Um, but I, I, I agree and I disagree because it's sort of like the Mandalorian is done now. But if people keep talking about Baby Yoda, uh -huh. that's that's a win, right? Like, maybe make it exclusive and then people will pay whatever. Or I don't know. What do you think? Like, should we have seen Baby Yoda stuff? Well, I saw, I talked about this actually on the Den of Nerds, like, a when it first started how they're like yeah, how did they screw up and it's like well yes and no because John mm -hmm. Favreau even said he's like you know he's like credit to Disney for not pushing the merch because that's how yeah. everything gets leaked is through merchandise yeah. and you know I mean yeah it would have sold like hotcakes and the, the old, but I do agree that they shouldn't have done it because because um, it would have leaked and really the joy of that first episode was finding out what what that thing was and then when you saw it it was like I wasn't expecting Baby Yoda. Yeah, I mean, I'm exactly. pretty sure 90 percent of the people weren't expecting Baby Yoda to be the asset. Mm -hmm. So I would say they did the right thing. However, the merch they ended up churning out after, like for Black Friday, was complete trash. You know, yeah. like, I know some people bought it, and no offense if you bought it, I don't mean that. But like, I just mean it. It's not even like the the merch that like there was a T-shirt, like a travel mug, pillow, yeah. whatever. Like that stuff's fine. However, Lucasfilm and Disney have the best artists on the planet yeah and they chose to sh shove a concept art picture of baby yoda and just paste it on. it was like i went on vistaprint and just took a picture online and put it on a mug. <laughs> it's like because like, john favreau tweeted that picture why couldn't they just have one of their talented artists yeah draw baby yoda like all the baby yoda artwork we've seen there's some yeah. fantastic Baby Yoda artwork, especially Christmas artwork and stuff like that. That's been phenomenal. Just have him draw a couple Baby Yodas, slop that on a t-shirt, on a pillow, on a mug. Uh, it would have been a lot better. It's just weird mm -hmm. that they were like, oh, uh, we have this... Like, they went in panic mode. And they're like, we have, yeah. we have a concept art. Let's just use the concept art. 
It's like, okay, okay. Like, I get the toys and stuff. Toys and stuff you can wait on. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, t shirts and merch like that, where you can, you know, I mean, T Public, like you just said, you can go on right now, buy it. It'll be on your doorstep in like four days. Like, yeah. You know, I don't know. And apparently, Disney's uh, or Lucasfilm Disney's is trying to stop as many people from like making merchandise of baby Yoda. So, so like, we have, we have a baby Yoda shirt on T public. Uh, we had, have we been stopped yet? No, we had two at one point, identical shirts. One said baby Yoda. One said the child, the baby Yoda one was pulled. <laughs> All right. Uh, they also pulled the, but I do shirt, which was just words that said, but I do. <laughs> I, and then I look at other things. I'm like, these guys just took pictures off StarWars.com, and it's on there. Yeah, but but I, do, I guess because when But I Do was uh, edited out of the movie, they were like, no T-shirts of But I Do. Um, speaking of spoilers, I was thinking about this in the last episode of uh, of Mandalorian. One of the best parts of the show are the fun um, uh, concept arts at, during the credits, which is genius because it makes you sit there and kind of respect the people that are in the show because the credits are rolling over top but like what are the odds that and this is not well, what are the odds right now we're not in that segment but like, what are the odds next season that somebody leaks that artwork because imagine we saw that before it would ruin a lot of that show but like it's nice because it doesn't want you to see it because you've seen the show um i would say low but only because i don't think it's easy to leak artwork like that because only you know the art team art department like only a handful of people would have access to that and i think if it got leaked everybody would know what it was and i'll oh i gotta speaking of leaks side act bar um hmm. i reached out to uh some friends al i'm gonna say shout out to al and i said i want to read the this did i mention this before the skywalker leaks the rise of skywalker leaks and like the, uh, what I don't think so. No. So I, I reached out after we saw the movie. I said, okay, I want to read the leaks now. I want to know what was in the leaks. And they were pretty spot on. Um, but I found it curious that what was leaked was all baseline information. Like the big reveals weren't le- like as it got closer to more and more was coming out. But like it was all like stuff that. Like plot point, it was like Kylo goes to Exegol and the Palpatine sends him on a mission. Like it was things like like very basic like that, and it almost felt like the leaks were leaked strategically. Oh yeah, like they omitted information on purpose. They're like, we want to tell you this, but we're not going to tell you the big part of it. We're going to tell you this little piece, like yeah, you know. So it was. It really, because you always like, I feel like Lucasfilm leaks things on purpose. And, and when I was reading it, I'm like, this feels like they strategically leaked what was leaked. And as it got closer and people were concerned about this or that, they put in a little bit more information just to to reassure you going in, to reassure you going in. And, and that, uh, so to your point about the Mandalorian leaks, I think, you know, when I look at them both, I'm like, well, no, I, I feel like they know for the most part, maybe there's like 10%, 20% that they didn't know were going to be leaked, but they mm-hmm. know what is going to get out there. Yeah. Oh, no. I. That's why I don't like, uh, what's that that one uh, site uh, making Star Wars? I've never been a fan of them because it's just like, like this is <laughs> lumber lumberjack Fred or whatever his name was, <laughs> and like his artwork was accurate later. when we uh, <laughs> saw it. But it was just like there's just something about it that just like this is weird. I, and I'm not, you know what they they're doing what we're doing. We just don't have any connections on site uh, on the films. So, but it's just like I don't think anyone is tricking someone on these things. Like. Especially Star Wars. They, they, you got to tell me they're paying someone just to be like, look at all your stuff or being able to stop finding ways that people can't leak this. Or like, and it makes sense to leak it at the right moment. I mean, look at, I, I mean, this is not a leak, but think about the Mandalorian, the seventh episode was re- released the day before Rise of Skywalker. So like, automatically we're all like oh it has some connection and it does it's not huge and it doesn't affect well how you see the movie 
but there is a link and that just fires off all the synapses in our head they're like we gotta watch it before we see the movie and like that's a marketing ploy like they know how fans are going to react yeah. or just people that like like logically regardless of how much you like star wars you're like oh why is this coming out before that so it's it's genius so i think they're fully aware and like i i, I yeah i just i don't like leaks because one it ruins it but then i'll say there's like this pompousness of it like oh we've 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 unlocked pandora's box and you're like yeah and that's terrible thank you yeah. stop it <laughs> Yeah, I don't. I, for me, I'm not a, a leak guy. You know, I like to go in yeah. and watch. I said I would watch the TV spots that, mm. you know, that Lucasfilm, Disney, like, like you can watch this. That stuff I, I, I looked at and I tried to stop. And then it was it was actually getting tough to stop too because every time I would upload a video on YouTube or something, there would be and it wouldn't be like playing, but the thumbnail would be a picture of something in like Ray holding the dagger up like that. And I was like, well, why the hell is that your thumbnail? Like, I don't want to see that. Like, let me see that. Yeah. Like I'm seeing the movie in three days. You can hide <laughs> this crap from me for three more days. Yeah. And that, that really, uh, that was frustrating. It's like, well, I can't, I can't not go on YouTube at this time, <laughs> but I, I also <laughs> don't want, I will unfollow everything Star Wars for the next three days. If it, yeah. And this is like the Star Wars official YouTube channel posting this stuff too. That's what made it frustrating. I don't know. I I really don't know. I I guess what it boils down to, I don't believe anything outside of the Star Wars YouTube channel because like they're getting it from the actual source. I don't trust anyone, though they can be right. I'm not saying that, but like. I just don't, and I don't watch the Star Wars YouTube channel, so it's it's that's the that's the that's the one downfall of like social media. It starts to tailor to you, so it always gives you updates when you look. If you've looked at something repetitive, it keeps tracks, right? So, mm-hmm. I'll I, I won't get Star Wars that much unless you send it to me because I don't look it up. So it's like, it's a yeah, but like yeah, you just. <sighs> I miss not having the internet. <laughs> no, if we didn't have the internet, we wouldn't be here right now. So, uh. That's, uh, that's true. Some things, you know, but whatever. I mean, whatever. Uh, let's talk about some good, you know, because everybody likes to go online and argue about Star Wars. It's great. Yeah. It's terrible. It's this. It's, it's bombing. It's a success. It's, but it's, you know, we're talking. It's more than, than the sum of its parts. Yeah. It's, it's, uh, it, like we said earlier, it means something different to everybody. Um, and, and the, and the rise of Skywalker through the visual dictionary, uh, had a really cool, it kind of puts star Wars in perspective. I'll say, right. Where, you know, like I just said, like, we're all like, well, this should happen or that should happen. And, and if the people writing these movies don't know star Wars canon and, and the people that, you know that like the the rise of Skywalker, that like the Last Jedi. They're not true Star Wars fans. The only true Star Wars fans are the people that that understand that those movies are about. You know what I mean? Like, that's not what Star Wars is about. Star Wars is about uh, our next story, Brock. Do you want to read it? Yeah, because it's kind of like a hollow news story, but we're doing it, so you should. <laughs> yeah. So uh, a gentleman named Riley Howell. Uh, uh, he. I'm trying to find the right word for it. He he sacrificed his life uh, at uh, UNC Charlotte when a gunman came in and tried to create havoc. He himself gave up his life to stop this gunman, and uh, he was a Star Wars fan. And the news of his story got back to, I believe, the story group or just the Lucasfilm folks in general. And because of his sacrifice and his love for Star Wars... Uh, they have added him into Star Wars canon. His name is Riley Howell, but he will be added into the Star Wars Rise of Skywalker visual dictionary as Riley Howell. I was wondering, because when I read this article, there wasn't all the information. So this one has more, but the original one I read, I was like, oh, how? It's like his name will be in it. I'm like, oh, I wonder if they'll, how they'll do it, because it's not, it's a great name. Don't get me wrong, but it's just like, it doesn't have a Star Wars, but I, I love it. They put a little hyphen in there, and I'm like, yeah, that's Star Wars. And it's exactly the same name. Uh, it's amazing how they can do that. But he will be added into the visual dictionary as one of the Jedi Knights that 
uh, the Jedi that was uh, the as they said custodian of Je- the Jedi text, specifically the one that Luke is uh, is protecting on Octo, and then Ray takes, and she. It's how she figures out that they need the Wayfinder and that it is the guide to Exegol. So if you purchase the Rise of Skywalker original dictionary, there will be mention of him. I, I, I was holding that book in my hands, and I was like, oh. <laughs> I almost bought it. I even almost bought it on, on Amazon for a really good deal. <laughs> I wish I could be holding it right now. So I definitely I want to buy it, or at least if I'm in the bookstore, I'm definitely going to look for it. But this is a really great story because it's like, he uh, he was just really into Star Wars, and his his family and friends are just blown away that like Lucasfilm went out of their way to think up what would be the best. He apparently had an encyclopedia knowledge of Star Wars, so him being a character that is the custodian of important Jedi texts is is wild. It's it's, it's they could have just thrown his name in or whatever. But they actually gave him a backstory, and like that is why like Lucasfilms gets what Star Wars is to people. Yeah, so that it's such a great story, great uh, now you know that his family has that for forever now in his memory and that, and it's touching. Like you said, it's they they didn't just throw his name in there; they took who he you know his his love for Star Wars, and they made it make sense, and it's something that he would be very very uh, proud proud of as well because very heroic act. Yeah, so wonderful stuff. Oh, I'm seeing the article here. The book is the Ayana, Ayan, Amonica, <laughs> Harmonica, Amonica. And yeah, Jedi Master and historian Riley Howell collecting many of the earliest accounts of the exploration and codifications of the Force in the Ayanamica, a two volume combination of codex correspondence and scrapbook. Though much of its contents would later be stored in heart in holocrons, which have sorry, I'm not like, trying to read off, of, <laughs> which have seen has since been lost. The physical books has passages written in the hands of original sages, carefully preserved by Howell. Like so, that, that's kind of cool. It's like it's it's an outdated form of yeah. Uh, information because the holocrons are the new things but then the holocrons get lost and they still have the books so i'm like Ugh. this is why we love star wars this is why we love lucasfilm well, <laughs> well done on that one uh yeah. very well done and uh it is about more than than movies and and feelings towards movies it's just uh it's a fun and it uh it shows that it can be a very good helpful, thankful community as well. Let's go over to the odds. Never tell me the odds. What are the odds today, James? I don't know. <laughs> we got some odds. They're brought to us apart by Patreon. Patreon. We have some new Patreons as well. Do you want to start off our Patreon list? Sure. All right. Our Patreons, our patrons are Heidi Fetter, executive producer. <laughs> Barry Brophy, Dennis Allen, Christine Allison, Mary Kristen Athen, Jeff Wilson, Aaron Quinton, Al Schuler, Phil Staniforth, Austin Schur, Scott D, Andy Higgins, Josh Price, Mason Hope, Matt W, Rez Rural Farm Boy, Frank Perkins, Sooner Thrawn, Neil Lowry, D Raven Spencer, Matt Dallas, DJ Blake, Gleek Play One, Janet Rubio, Charlotte, Kayla Davis, Girls with Sabres. Oh. Yeah, but uh, the last one's a den of nerds. I, this one, this is the last email you sent me. Uh, you guys uh, change it because I don't have uh, you don't Girls with Sabres on last here. Last minute addition to the show. Oh, yeah. thank you, Welcome ladies. Welcome aboard, Girls with Sabres. James, uh, we have to have them on the show again because, one, I will gladly debate about Ben Demption. Uh, I need to watch some of their stuff so I can fully understand why they're so upset. But I think it's a very important thing we should be talking about because it's like, yeah, yeah. what a phenomenon that the 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 Raylos and Ben Demption fans, like it's just it's shocking. I feel like 
if it gets any bigger, we're going to get a documentary on Netflix about it. We might. <laughs> it might be Disney Plus, but we might get that because it's it's pretty big. It'll, like, it'll be like, don't F with cats. Like, don't F with Rayla. <laughs> <laughs> it's true. They are uh, a very strong uh, yeah. community out there. Um, and, you know, uh, everybody... Uh, it's, <laughs> it's... No, I think... It's tough because you go, you know, it. We've all kind of been there where you really believe in something, believe it's going one way, and then they flip the script on you, mm. and it's it's disappointment, shock, and all of that, and it's it's tough. And the, you know, the, <clears throat> excuse me. The thing with Star Wars is we all love Star Wars, and we're all very passionate about Star Wars. And so when something like like you know, we saw with the Last Jedi, kind of different, but. When <clears throat> a little bit more hateful, I would say. But what what happens is you get passionate about it, and then it's not uh, what was anticipated, or was expected, uh, or you, you know that's it. It comes out, and you're like, well, this is the reality of the situation, and now you have to come to terms with it, and you have to grasp it, and and uh, you know everybody's gonna get over it. I think I think the, the the thing with this is we're not getting a new movie for three years and it's going to have nothing to do with what we just saw probably. Uh, so they're going to spend a lot of time with these authors writing stories about these characters. We're going to get more. We're going to learn more. We're going to see more. Uh, and so maybe that will fulfill some of the void. Um, although they, they have said that Project Luminous is not about Ben Solo. So don't expect that to be about Ben Solo. Um, but I think we are going to we're going to get more, and I think I think there will be. I know a lot of people are having problems with the closure of Ben in this movie. Mm-hmm. Um, I, I, but I think um, I, I was fine with how that ended for him personally. I understand where people are coming from when they're not, but I think I think in a novel uh, or a comic we will get uh, the closure that people were uh, anticipating. So my odds are 75%. <laughs> All right, first odd. The odds of a Dr. Afra Disney Plus series happening, but it is animated. An animated oh. Dr. Afra series. I love I love this one. Uh, yeah, we heard Dr. Afra is the possible next project or one of the next projects, and I think that is a home run, 100% let's make that project. But the animated part, yeah, maybe that would work, but like, one problem you might occur when it's animated that some people won't watch it because they're like, oh, it's yes. for kids. Because they don't know who Dr. Afra is. So, outside of the comic book fans like me. Um, I'm going to say, though, I think animated makes sense for whatever reason. Uh, I'm going to go 67%. That'll be animated. Uh, I think 100% they should make something with yeah. Dr. Afra because it could be, I think I said to you, James, like Mandalorian is like Daredevil and Dr. Afra can be your Jessica Jones because it's just like, yeah. it's great. <laughs> you could you could work this all together. I would love Afra to come on. I think I think there's truth to these rumors, so I'm going to go high on Afra happening. However, <laughs> the animated part, I just, and look, no... This is not a slight to animation or anything, but like you said, a lot of people will brush it off and not a, not yeah. like people watch The Mandalorian because it was live action. They basically yeah. just made an animated film, an animated show, live action with The Mandalorian, especially in that ending. But like, yeah, if you if if you make it a cartoon, it will be viewed as a cartoon, and people will not watch it. Uh, that's just the reality of it. Like, I guarantee you, the Clone Wars, as excited as everybody is about it coming back, there's going to be a ton of people that aren't going to care. Uh, just, yeah. just the way it is. And I think Afro, you know, you have this part now where everyone's crying diversity for Star Wars. Uh, mm-hmm. This is your opportunity right now. To knock it out of the park. You have it. Mm-hmm. Like, it's in the palm of your hands. Do it. Um, so I'm going to go... I'm going to go Do 90% it. it's happening, but I think I'm going to go 80% it's animated because I feel like they're just... Because I think because she's based on a comic book character, that's why yeah. they would stick to it being animated. I do hope uh, that I my odd is completely off on that aspect of it because I think she deserves live action as well. Yeah. Again, not taking away from animation. I love animation, yeah. but I just feel like it'll be taken more seriously in live action. 
but they could they could like sort of intermingle these together. Doctor Afra sort of takes place after uh, New Hope. Um, so technically, I'm not. <laughs> I'm not used to calling the Mandalorian by his actual name, uh, so I'm just going to call him Mandalorian. <laughs> he's rough, they're probably roughly the same age at that time period. He's maybe not in Mandalorian armor, but he's definitely in with the Mandalorian, so huh. they could have a weird, cool thing where it's like the young Dr. Aphra we're used to meets a, a young Mandalorian, and then in the... And at the same time, Mandalorian ha- has a old Dr. Aphra in there. Like that would be kind of interesting. It's like it's like I know, and they the episodes correspond. You know, it's like they go on, they meet and have a good adventure, and then in the Mandalorian, they, he has a new problem. It's like I know someone that can help, and he goes to see old Dr. Aphra. Like they did that with the comics. Like, let's do that. That's fun. That's kind of cool. Anyway. Yeah, definitely cool. Um, Next odd. I'm gonna change an odd. Okay. Based on some events that have happened that have been occurring lately, so I'm gonna go. My next odd will be the odds of Ryan Johnson's trilogy or one solo Ryan Johnson movie happening next for Star Wars. Will this be the one that we get announced uh, in uh, January next month, just a few weeks from now? What are the odds that Ryan Johnson's the next one? Yeah. It's funny how the script has flipped, and now people are praising Ryan Johnson. <laughs> um. I'm going to go full Brock on this one because when we talked about like they're going to announce the director of the next movie, I didn't think Ryan Johnson at all, even though I'm very pro Ryan Johnson. So it's like, yeah, he's going to make a movie. Um, but I, just hearing announcement means like something new, like announcing that Ryan Johnson the next is like, that would be like kind of not exciting because it's like, yeah, we know you. <laughs> he's we know he, he's going to make another movie. Um, so I'm gonna go full Brock on it because that would be fun, and I think, I think it would get some people's back up. So like, or like you said, or maybe everyone will be excited and we go back to normal about loving Star Wars again yeah, until the movie comes out and then everybody. <laughs> yeah, exactly. I'm gonna go full Brock as well. I just, you know, I just, I don't think. See, the thing is, his next movie won't be Star Wars, but this movie doesn't come out for three years. Yeah. So, but I'm gonna go full Brock because I think, I think uh, Lucasfilm. The majority of, of, of Disney loves Ryan Johnson and what he did, or Lucasfilm does anyway, and they want to work with him again. Um, and uh, But I think there's also a percentage that doesn't, um, you know, because you look at the follow that happened, and it definitely had some effects on for, on Rise of Skywalker opening weekend. I know that movie is starting to – it's picking up the steam now, and it's actually go, – it's pacing ahead. It's pacing ahead of Last Jedi now, I think, yeah. as of this recording, but, you know, whatever. Yeah, it is what it is. All right, our last odd. This is back to another Disney Plus series, and this is a Disney yeah. Plus series. This kind of came into light the other day, uh, where it's been like revealed that Rose Tico only has like a minute and thirty seconds of. Damn, that's in my. Oh, that's sorry. in Hollow News. <laughs> so I just want to add this odd though, because um, John Chu, the director of Crazy Rich Asians, tweeted, "Let's make this happen for a Rose Tico Disney Plus series." Yeah. Brock, never tell me the odds. Rose Tico, Disney Plus series directed by John Chu. 100% let's do it. And that's <laughs> not me being like, yeah. But I've said it before. Rose is a very interesting character when you read like the, the novelization of Last Jedi and then seeing her in comics. The This relationship that we barely see of her and Paige, like you could, it, it's a no brainer. Just make a show where she's coming up the ranks as part of the resistance, but then have her flashback to life with, with Paige. It could be a, uh, like, it doesn't have to be an ongoing series. I don't know what else you do with that story, but like, uh, I think it's, I think it's great. Um, and it's Kelly Marie Tran needs more. She needs uh, more credit for what she did and to like be a big deal in last Jedi and take a smaller role. And like, I hope it, it doesn't bother her, but it shows a lot that she still gave her all, in my opinion. Yeah, I think, uh, mm-hmm. like, I think when she wasn't in the marketing and everyone had that Where's Rose uh, mm-hmm. hashtag, I think that was that was the sign of she's not really in this movie that much. Like, yeah, yeah. Get over it. And, and it is unfortunate. I think 
you know, the way I look at the the movie is they were they wanted to do a movie with the trio going on the adventure. Yeah. Uh, she wasn't a J.J. Abrams creation. He still put her in there. I was yeah. actually – there was a point in time when I wasn't sure if she would be in the movie or not. Yeah. Well, I mean, think about it. Ryan Johnson didn't bother putting Snap Wexley in. You know what I mean? Like – Sometimes you just don't. And I was like, I, I, there was a part of me that said I could see her not being in it. And then she was. And I think that uh, there's a rumor that she had or she has some scenes with Ray that got cut mm. um, for time or whatever. Who knows? Um, I think it would be, again, smart of them to do this. I don't know what their plan for their series on Disney Plus is. This is the thing that's confusing me. Is I, I, We don't really know. Like Marvel kind of has a plan. Uh, but Disney hasn't. Lucasfilm, sorry, hasn't. Uh, said much i think though this is you know you have somebody who clearly wants to do it they tweeted out that they wanted to do it if you can get that worked out you can come up with a story like you said moving up the ranks of the of the resistance the rebellion or not or even afterwards now right like moving up in the new republic or whatever it is a new new republic um, yeah yeah matter. you have that happening uh and then you can flash back to her and page i think you got a, a you know a gold series right there mm. and uh, so i'm gonna go for me personally, yeah, I'm with you on the hundred percent, but I think the re- realistically yeah. happening, it's like a sixty three percent. Yeah, yeah. I just feel like this might be something that they don't want to touch with a ten foot pole because I think I re- think it's it, it should be it's not a Rose centric show, but she's a main character in the cast, and we get those storylines along with it. So they could call it Tico. Tico. I would Tico-ish. watch a show called Tico. Yeah. Mm-hmm. But that's me. I, only... I mean, you could easily just do Republic and just call it Republic, and then <laughs> that's what. That's true. Um, I think it makes sense too, because it's like if you're not going to go back to the Skywalker storyline, give us shows that fill in those blanks, and then the future show will relate back to what we see on TV. Like, yeah. it's how how, do, how is that different from reading in an expanded universe book? Like. That's just not, and that's what Disney Plus to me is the expanded universe. So let's uh, let's let's, exactly. let's give me that Rose Tico show. I'd watch it. I would renew my subscription for it. <laughs> All right, Hollow News. Hollow News. Hollow We've heard news. some of it, but I'm gonna read it anyways. So Hollow News. I'm singing over you. Hollow News. The Hollow. news you need to know about nerds. Uh, Disney has said on Thursday of this week, so the Thursday after Christmas. <laughs> That uh, the Star Wars sequel, Rise of Skywalker, has brought in a $32 million in the United States on Wednesday, the biggest Christmas day for any movie since Star Wars The Force Awakens in 2015. And the total worldwide earnings for Star Wars so far, as of this recording, is $500 million. Um, it, is, uh, da, 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 da. it has earned $176 million in North America in its first weekend. And uh, it has proved to be the, the choice flick. For uh, Christmas moviegoers this year, it uh, beat out Jumanji in the next level and Little Women, who they both did well, but they didn't do well enough. That's not as a word. Uh, Star Wars movies have made over $9 billion worldwide, just the movies, and that's not putting inflation in hold. So that's pretty wild. Uh, in other Skywalker, Rise of Skywalker news, uh, Dom L. Gleason in an interview with uh, Kino Winner, I do not know what that is, <laughs> says that there was a, a battle scene with uh, General Hux and General Pride in the movie that was deleted. He said, yes, one time we were in a battle scene in a forest with Kylo Ren. Our bits got cut out, so we'll have to wait for those on the extras. So maybe it's uh, a worthwhile scene i don't know but like i was at the beginning of the movie where he's fighting those vader lovers on what you call it mustafar that's cool i'm excited to see deleted scenes from this so and in our final story uh yes people are going on twitter with the hashtag rose tico deserved better citing that the little screen time that kelly marie tran uh who plays rose got was Really ridiculous after she was such a big character in Last Jedi. Uh, as James said earlier, she got a minute and 16 seconds of screen time in Rise of Skywalker, which is like, that doesn't sound right. But then you think, like, maybe that is right. I mean, Captain America had six minutes of screen time in 
uh, Infinity War. So you're like, yeah, that sounds right. Um, it's too bad, but if you want to support Rose, get out on there and th- start dropping the Rose Tico deserve better hashtag, and perhaps we will get a Disney Plus show with yeah. the lovely yeah. Kelly Marie Tran in it. And in final, final news, the the folks over at Bad Lip Reading have done another Star Wars film. This one called Don't Touch My Stick, and it is Bad Lip Rib Lip dub of uh, the Last Jedi footage with everybody's favorite Yoda singing the song because you know seagulls they gotta stay away. So check that out on the Bad Lip Reading Bad Rip yeah Bad Lip Reading uh, YouTube channel. It is. The song of the season. All right, and this has been Hollow News. Hollow News. Da 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 da. Hollow News. Brock, your singing has really depleted. You just Hollow I don't, News. I don't have to sing. Da 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 da. Hollow News. I'm 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 uh, biding time while I try to get the top five graphic up. <laughs> just, uh, keep singing hollow news right now we really need to like i really need to send you what news stories i have because <laughs> like so many times it's like ah don't i got to my you. news i will say the rose tico thing reminds me in like a weird way like the the uh, batman and batman versus superman when um i know that sounds weird but when batman like when superman kills zod and everybody cried like oh can superman kill and then the first thing batman does in batman versus superman is kill you're like can you just please the fans for a second <laughs> like you know that they want rose Tico in the movie just put her in for yeah. an extra five minutes and nobody will cry or just you know have her fix the falcon anyway talk no about- no uh no slam against Jana, but like rose could easily done most of Jana's stuff in this movie and you feel like you know and i don't want to pin any but also poe could have done what rose did in the for in the last jedi and i sure, feel like yeah. they're just like going back and forth on that also yeah um but yeah, anyway it's it is what it is we got what we got and uh mm. you can't change it so enjoy it there's no point in bitching and moaning over it no so it's not changing but you know what if you say you want to show that's different yeah uh so hashtag make rose tico disney plus happen top five moments from the rise of skywalker my list sucks <laughs> Flat out because uh, there was a lot of moments i liked so i just like here's five my number five is hearing vader's voice gosh darn it vader's voice is star wars just this is the time where I fixed my chair. Yep. I don't know why my roommate bought this. It's a nice chair, but it just doesn't work properly. I uh, yeah, I am excited for this. I love this movie, so I'll start. I already <laughs> top, did my five. top five. I already said my number five. Thanks for listening. I was not listening. What did you say? Vader's voice. Oh, hot. That's damn, why I missed his it. voice. Is Star Wars. <laughs> my number five is Chewbacca. <laughs> blowing up not because it's uh i'm it's not a happy moment but it was just like <gasps> i was of course it you. was a bait and switch but like oh my god uh i was i had a moment and uh mm-hmm. i saw your reaction I, saw <laughs> I had to actually tell aaron that he wasn't dead mm. i was like dude, he's not they did a great job i was i did a great job when they went on the ship and like cheer has gone i'm like wow they're really selling this for the audience right now but I had to tell Aaron that he wasn't dead, and you were in tears. And uh, your <laughs> your W G R uh, wonderful girlfriend Reham. Yeah, your W G R had to console you. <laughs> was... Be be a grown man. <laughs> <laughs> You're an Adam Brock. You were. Am <laughs> uh, I number four? Uh, all the C three PO moments. Especially, oh, that's going to be higher for me. Especially Babu Frick being his oldest friend. <laughs> uh, that is, uh, that's my number three. My number but three. my my number four is in the same vein. Uh, the banter between Ka- uh, Poe, Finn, and Ro- Rose, <laughs> Ray, specifically. Oh, uh, Poe Dameron, Spice Runner, Runner of Spice. <laughs> yeah, that was great. I also love the the Falcon. It looks better than the BBA. What's wrong with BBA? Yeah, they had they had great banter. BB 8s not on fire. That's worse. <laughs> uh, my number three, uh, Ray with all the Jedi. When Ray gets the power of all the Jedi, 
No, my, that's mine similar. I just, yeah, the hearing their voices was great. So yeah. I guess that's the exact same thing. It was awesome. I, part of me, yeah. at one point, I was talking to someone, like, they could have put the images in there, but I don't know. It's like, do you need them? Yeah. Also, like, is Mace Windu and a Force Ghost? Like, I don't know. <laughs> I, I, like, I don't know. I, who knows? Uh, so my number two, Leia's death. When Leia died and, and R2 reacted and, and then when you when Chewie's reaction, the reaction of R2 and Chewie to Leia's death were the two of my favorite moments of the movie. They were just great, big, powerful moments. We did not get a moment for Han's death. You know, we got Leia kind of falling down and then we yeah. got, um, and then for Luke's death, we kind of got, Luke's gone. Um, nothing big. This was like a, a real moment, um, which was probably a, you know more to do with uh, Carrie Fisher herself, and this being you know the actual passing of an actor. Uh, so that's my number two. It's like people say that, uh, Ben's death is a sad way to end the movie, but like he joins the force and Leia joins the force at the same time. So it's kind of it's a kind of happy ending because as much as he has to die, he's returned to yeah. his mother. They can be together in the force. Yeah, uh, my number he two is the... <laughs> yeah, they can finally go home. They can be a family. Uh, my number two is C3PO Anthony Daniels for best supporting actor this year at the Oscars. The I would give my Academy movie. Awards or the I would, uh, I would pledge to that campaign. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, and just so great. It's like, <laughs> even though you didn't ask, I, I'm okay too. <laughs> Or <laughs> when he says something, and they all when they when they get to Pasana, and he's I can't remember what he says, but they all look at him, and then he just turns around. And sees oh yeah, they all look. At... <laughs> <laughs> so uh, good, so good. Uh, uh, and my uh, number one is uh, simply put, Ben Solo uh, kicking ass. Yeah, he did a really good job. And I was thinking about it on the second watch when you're saying like, why does he have to be so perfect? like his hair is like perfectly you know whatever but i was like that's because he's got this baby face it's because he is reborn re into yeah. the light side and i kind of like it and i was like this is ben ben is different from kylo and i'm like oh yeah i like that yeah, absolutely my number one is hey hey babu frick uh, <laughs> he's just wonderful like i it's you don't deserve that. I know that, that there's teacher. so much other things in this movie, but like, he's just a great character. He is. Thank you, thank you, George Lucas. I know you didn't create the character. <laughs> uh, but without George <laughs> Lucas, we wouldn't have Babu Frick. So it all comes from circle. No, he's a great character. I wasn't sure what to expect from Babu Frick going in. Pleasantly surprised with yeah. uh, Moni Myrtle. As yeah, it was Shirley really Anderson. Fantastic. Just fantastic. Oh, I'm Babu Frick. I told Reham, my wonderful girlfriend Reham, about she's a huge Harry Potter fan. And when I said, oh, it's Shirley Henderson who did Moaning Myrtle, she was like, that's crazy. And then a couple days later, she was watching Bridget Jones' Diary, I believe. And she's in it as well. She just took a screen cap and then put an arrow and says, Babu Frick. <laughs> <laughs> this is why we're dating. <laughs> Babu freaking. You can frick off. <laughs> so that's our top five. Let us know what your top fives are in the comment mm -hmm. uh, below. It's always fun to see those uh, because everyone's Star Wars, uh, whatever is is different. Is that does that make sense? What I just said. Yeah, Do I no, make it... sense? I like that we're not a huge channel because the the comments are you know they're not toxic. I mean, I'm certain people I disagree with, but they're not toxic, so it's fun to read. So thank you very yeah, much. You can all disagree. You, we can all disagree with each other as long yeah. as we, that's the point. I think. You know, like, I mean, we all have different viewpoints. Yeah. Like the only good baseball team are the Blue Jays. All right, everybody, thanks for watching right. episode 147. 147, Brock. Can you can you believe that? I was hoping we hit 150 by the end of the year, but we're. Very, very close. We, yeah, we took a couple weeks off. We took a long time off in the summer, so we should be aware of it. But we're at 147. Year will start at 140. Unless we could do another. You want to do another one right now? Hi, welcome to episode 148 of the. <laughs> we're just doing three in a row. Welcome. I know uh, it's been a lot of fun. Um, um, uh, I hope everybody I hope out there has a very happy new year. Brock, I hope you have a happy new year. 
Yeah. Um, and you know, because typically your New Year's are scummy because I'm trying to work it in, but I can't. So Brock, I'm just gonna go ahead and say it. You were always scum. <laughs> Rebel scum. Happy New Year. Hey, scumbags, thanks for watching. Don't forget to give us a thumbs up on our video. <laughs> As always, please subscribe to our YouTube channel, Rebel Scum Podcast, for all the latest.